were you surprised by anything in England? I mean, did you did you feel did you feel welcome here? No, I didn't. But then you got to make the best of what you have. Who you going to cry to? Nobody didn't ask you to come. <laughs> That's how I look at it. I might be wrong, but I was all looking at right through life. Did you see it as the mother country? Back to the mother well, country. Well, we think that way, but it didn't work that way. I think I made a good choice in life mm -hmm. coming here, you know. So, £28 well spent. Very, 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 very <laughs> well spent. I haven't got no regrets. London. Is the place for me to do 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 boom boom London this lovely city you can go to France or America India Asia or Australia but you must come back to London City Well believe me I am speaking broad mindedly I am glad to know my mother country I've been traveling the countries years ago, but this is the place I wanted to know, darling London. This is the place for me. Arrivals at Tilbury. The Empire Windrush brings to Britain 500 Jamaicans. Many are ex-servicemen who know England. They serve this country well. In Jamaica, they couldn't find work. Discouraged but full of hope, they sailed for Britain. Citizens of the British Empire coming to the mother country with good intent. The Windrush generation has become a popular symbolic title referring to the West Indian settlers who arrived at Tilbury Docks on SS Empire Windrush on June 22nd, 1948. The vast majority of them had served in the armed forces, particularly the Royal Air Force in World War II, and helped to rebuild Britain after in peacetime. They've come to seek work in Britain and are ready and willing to do any kind of job that will help the motherland along the road to prosperity. They're all full of hope for the future, so let's make them very welcome as they begin their new life over here. The ship made one journey only to the West Indies. If you've seen any images of the arrival of Empire Windrush, you've probably seen this iconic picture of three sharply dressed men. On the left, John Hazel, age 21, a boxer. In the middle, Harold Wilmot, age 32, a case maker, and John Richards, age 22, a carpenter. In this film, John Richards tells his own story. Did you have any sense that you were part of the historic? No, <laughs> just, a, just a next guy on the board, that's all I was. So I, I guess a lot of those on board would have had accommodation to go to? No, I, I didn't have an accommodation. You didn't? <laughs> Seventy years after his stay at the Clapham South Deep Shelter, John returned for a special visit in 2018. So, John, welcome back. Maybe it isn't nice to be back. It's been a while, yeah? I remember once I had a friend by the name of Briggs, and we walked in to find out how far we go, and we walk and walk and walk. And we think we would want to reach Clapham Common. But we walk and walk until we tired. So we just sit on a turn back. <laughs> we never find the end. So I don't know how far this goes. <laughs> that used to wake us up. <laughs> I got to go to work at, at Hopington. And then that's what we wake up in the morning. We gradually moved from here. I moved from here and went to the hostel at Navarone Square in South Kensington. I keep on and traveling until you find somewhere. So how long did you stay in this shelter, do you remember? We stayed about eight weeks, I think. Eight weeks? Yeah, I think about that. Mm -hmm. Now, why have you come to England? To seek a job. And what sort of job do you want? Any type, so long as I get a good pay. Some will go into industry, others intend to rejoin the services. Now, you're an ex-Air Force, aren't you? Yes. Are you going back into the Air Force again? Yes. Do you know if you'll be accepted? I think so. I have a job meantime. And what kind of work was it? We do um, undercarriage work, okay. chiefly. 
And then we, we, we do um, body making and things like that they do. We do everything. Mm -hmm. African shop that I know, named Tony, said, you want a flat? I said, yes. He said, where I live, the, the, the um, ground floor flat on Tavista Crescent is empty. And I know the lady and I will get it for you. And Tony made the flat for me. Mm -hmm. So you're lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the first, you will accept three people into a room. Like an other thing, after a while, you only accept two people. But how many people in that room said, two of you said, no, I don't want that, or things like that, fans, dry fans, or whatever. And then you, 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 you advance from this stage again, where you, you alone want a room. You don't want to share with nobody. And then you move to that stage. And then you move to the next stage, you get yourself a flat. You know, and then after you get yourself a flat, then you get yourself a house if you, if you can do it. Not everybody can do it. Lots of people are not fortunate enough to do it. But some do it. I was fortunate enough that I could do that. But a lot of people who work as hard as me wasn't fortunate enough to do it. And that's how life goes. You know? Let's get back to the very, very beginning. You said that you came from Port Portland. Mm -hmm. And... Um, what kind of family did you grow up in? Was it a big family? Well, it was um, seven of us. Five, four, um, four boy, one girl, and your mother and your father. That's it. And you said you were the eldest? Mm hmm And um, what did your father do? He's a farmer. He's a farmer? Small farmer. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. What kind of things did he grow? He grew everything in Guanana. Chiefly yeah. important, and then the yeah, normal grown, grown food. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. what, did he take it to market? Yes, take some to market when they have enough. Okay. After I feed, feed five people, <laughs> you quite leave to take it to market. So you, you just had enough to survive? Just enough to survive. We wasn't that rich people. Mm -hmm. I'm from, from my, we're called a poor background. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. You get up in the morning and you might have about two shillings, three shillings, if you are lucky. Uh -huh. You know? Mm -hmm. And lots of people forget about that, but I don't. Mm -hmm. It's five of us. So, as you were approaching England, did everybody get dressed up? Well, coming out of the boat, we didn't. We, <laughs> yeah. In other words, we, we all get sharp. <laughs> <laughs> we all get sharp because then they put everybody get sharp coming out. Okay. Everybody dressed. The girls and mm -hmm. kids, they all dress up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they're going to a Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 like, I like to see cricket. I love cricket. I play for British Railways for nearly 30 odd years. Mm. What was it like being there when West Indies beat England the first time? Good. I love it. <laughs> I enjoy it. Oh, yeah. It was good because it's unusual, isn't it? It was very important for us. Very important that we didn't have anything else doing. <laughs> we beat England in the West Indies, but we never beat them in this country. A, a series. So it was not for us to win. We're happy about that. Something uplifting. Something we do. Bush and moral. So, well, we can do that. And this is very good. You know? So, in these early years, what were your impressions of England? I mean, um... Oh, you get used to it. What, what it, do you get used to? The chap that I work with in open town, they were gentlemen. Mm-hmm. Yes. only one chap that always bugged me. Chap, we call him, they call him uh, Harris, Jim Harris. And what he used to do, if there's anything in the paper that it's, it was a black man, Fight somebody, or I go to court. And it's in the paper. He always cut it out and been bring it, <laughs> bring it and show me. And if there's anything that derogative about black people in the paper, mm. he always cut it out and bring and show me. And what was his explanation? Why would he do that? I don't know. <laughs> and there's a, a Frank, a, a, named Frank, and he says to him, why are you all so-and-so about Jimmy? Why? 
journey, he said, it don't trouble you. And he been in this thing. And he turned and said, he doesn't speak to me. <laughs> so, okay. so thrown back. Mm -hmm. What about in the general uh, streets and everything? It didn't bother you? Mm. I know what they give, I know what they are, I never trust them. <laughs> <laughs> They laugh with you, but they stick in the back. Mm -hmm. I know that. They, they didn't worry me. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't want anything from them anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Everything I'm getting, I work right here. I didn't work for anything in Jamaica. Everything I'm getting, my pension, my free pass on the railway. And because I worked for the railway for 40 odd years. And I'm, that is my money. I'm in due to it. So I'm not going to run away and leave to give anybody else. I'm earning it. So did you meet your wife in England? Yeah. She was living in Fulham. And is she from your part of the woods? No, she's from a place. That, um, she's from, from Jamaica. She's from Hanover. Okay. I am one part of the parish, one part of the island, and she's the next part uh -huh. here. Mm. Would we meet over here? Mm. And when did you get married? <laughs> it's a long time ago, I remember it. <laughs> you have to remember. <laughs> no, I don't mean. <laughs> so how many children did you have? We haven't got any. You didn't have any? No. They all died. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, she carried a book for a miscarriage. Oh, sorry to hear that. That's one of these things. Mm -hmm. Part of life. Do you ever regret? Coming to to England or no, never have any regret, never. I like being here. A lot of guys say oh, this and that, but I like being here. I have no complaint. Nobody didn't ask me here. I come on my free will. If I don't like it, I go. But I love being here. I'm so fortunate. My wife don't complain either. <laughs> so I have a happy life. I have what I want. I don't have everything because I can't get everything I want. But I'm satisfied. Mm -hmm. I'm not worried. You know? Mm -hmm. If I go until I bought a hundred, well, that's it. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it. <laughs> mm -hmm. I enjoy my life at the present time. Mm -hmm. Let's put it down there. I'm better off here yeah. than if I was in Jamaica. Why do you prefer it here to Jamaica? You see, when you, when you spend nearly four, when you spend 49 years at a place, it's half of your life, you know. July coming will be 50 years. You don't get my run away from it, do you? Simple as that. When we want to go to Jamaica, we go to Jamaica. Once we stay for two or three months, we stay. We come back. If I finish out there, they bury me there. If I finish up here, they bury me down Kensal Green. No problem. <laughs> it's all <our> work out. <laughs> That's how I look at life. Probably somebody might say, oh, well, um, just a stupid way. But that's my way, and I'm doing it the way I want. As Frank Sinatra says, I do things my way. I think I make a good choice in life, mm -hmm. coming here. Mm -hmm. you know? So, £28 well spent. Very, 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 very <laughs> well spent. I haven't got no regrets. And that's a lot of money. Yes. Yeah. At that time it was. You had to grow big when it's about 20. You win it like about five pounds. <laughs> <laughs> London is the place for me. London, this lovely city. You can go to France or America, India, Asia or Australia, but you must come back. To London City. Well, believe me, I am speaking broad mindedly. I am glad to know my mother country. I've been traveling the countries years ago, but this is the place I wanted to know, darling London. This is the place for me.